we're celebrating our three-year YouTube anniversary by dining at Flying Fish at Disney's Boardwalk Resort. Let's celebrate. I'm Jay. You're watching the Theme Park Foodies, and we are back at the Boardwalk Resort, one of the most picturesque Disney resorts to dine at a place that you, our viewers, our subscribers, our tight-knit group, have suggested we dine at. Where, Sam? Flying Fish. Yes. So today, actually, July 7th, when we plan to release this video, is going to be the three-year anniversary of... Theme Park Foodies. Yes, we started it exactly three years ago. On this day, we released our first video, which I think was a tour of... The Courtyard by Marriott in Hershey. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we got locked in the laundry room. <laughs> it was, uh, it was, it was a time. It was during the pandemic. It you was... can check Oldest now on YouTube again. You can do like search by Oldest. So uh, if you guys want to take a look at it, be kind. It was our first time. We've um, improved a lot since then. We still have a lot I hope to learn. So. You know, uh, but I really appreciate uh, the opportunity that we've had to be able to grow our subscribers, um, our viewers here on YouTube. Yeah, we definitely do not say it enough, but thank you so much because yes. we know, especially in the community that we are in, there are so many amazing creators. Yeah, and we're great so videos. thankful that you take the time to watch our videos, to leave such nice comments. Like it really means a lot to us. Yeah, we you know seriously. Like, and literally helps. every single one. Yeah. every single yeah. comment we we're like oh hey did you see that comment and we talk about it and like it really makes our day yeah so, it helps keep us going and speaking of our subscribers it's you that suggested to us to dine at flying fish we've we've always heard great things we've never eaten here before but we figured since you know we've we've grown this small base of subscribers that we really appreciate we'll dine here at your suggestion to celebrate <laughs> our three years uh sam you have been, like, you're not a seafood fan, but I feel like I you're an aficionado finding, of seafood restaurants. I keep finding myself at seafood restaurants. <laughs> well, you got married at a seafood restaurant. Probably. I did, but there's always good steak at seafood restaurants. So you can always count on that. So. Yeah. All right, uh, so we'll show you guys how to get there. We're going to dine on some of their signature options. I'm excited. Uh, it's a seafood-based restaurant. It's right on the Disney's boardwalk. It's a beautiful boardwalk. So you ready to go in? Uh, if you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. Join us for our dinner at the boardwalk. All right. We're gonna head straight through. Basically just cutting right through the lobby. We're actually already 10 minutes late because I got caught at work. The lobby in here really is so impressive. It's like carousel themed. More carousel themed than carousel coffee. Is this, oh, I thought that was gonna automatically open. It does not automatically open. All right, we need to head down the steps and to the actual boardwalk. So as you head down the steps, you'll bear right and you'll see flying fish right in the right hand corner. All right, we're about, I think 10 minutes late. Let's see if they'll let us in. This might be a big fail. All right, we're in. Very nice. Look at there's those birds up there. Are those fish? Oh, those are actual flying fish. All right, we have been seated. And the first thing that I want to say, Sam, is I really enjoyed the decor in here. Yes, it actually, I think, got refurbed last year. And I think it used to be more um, like carnivalesque. But when you first walk in, you can actually see a picture of like a they, boardwalk. They kept some like of that, but if they wanted to make it more sophisticated since it's more like a signature dining experience, which it is it's gorgeous. Yeah, there's like bubbles on the ceiling, actual flying fish chandelier, and it's right next to the very festively themed Abracadabar where Sam snuck in and got a little drink. I thought we were going to be waiting longer, so I was like, oh, let's go grab a drink. Like we're celebrating the three years. It's Friday, it's 4th of July weekend. Do you know what drink that is? I think it was seashore sweet. I'll look it up, but it does have vodka, lemonade, and cotton candy syrup. And it's nice. delicious. It is strong and sweet. Mm -hmm. Eight. Eight? Yes. Oh, wow. All right, so for before we look at the menu, I wanted to bring up, or Sam actually brought up the fork. It's a fish, the fish, it's a fish fork. Fish gills. Yeah, it's fish like gill fork. Mermaid. Yeah, it's a mermaid fork. Now let's take a I look. Like, 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 kind of like that 
Yeah. All right, so a lot of different appetizers. I love me a lobster bisque. They have Spanish octopus, slow roasted pork belly. That sounds good, like something we could share, Sam. Oak grilled romaine. And then they do have some really good looking steaks for entrees. I feel like I gotta get the fish and Sam has gotta get some of the steak. Oh, look at these enhancements, too. This seat and this table offer up beautiful views of the boardwalk. I thought you were gonna say me. Well, you and the boardwalk. That's why I was panning <laughs> into you. You were like going to me. Yeah. All right, so they're starting us off with these rosewater towelettes. They said they started this during COVID to clean your hands. I know a lot of Japanese restaurants do this. Just dump it right in there, Sam. No. Nope. You were like questioning. It's like magic. Now you open it up. You feel clean? I do. Feels nice. All right, so they start this off with their house-made butter. They make the butter in-house. It's a scratch kitchen, so everything's made from scratch. The bread, too. Is it, is it, like Sam, there was potato and chive in here, right? Yes. It's and so then, warm. And then there's like a black sea salt on the butter? Yes. Now look, you can see the chive right there. All right, so um, I guess I'll just peel this off. All right, it's a little tougher than I expected. It's not really whipped. It's more of like a buttery butter, if that makes any sense. This is so warm, Sam. Look at it just like melting right there on the bread. That's the top bread service of all time. One of them. <laughs> Currently my top two bread services are Mrs. Knott's Chicken Dinner, those fresh biscuits, and California Grill. This is on California Grill level. It's just so fresh. Joey, I can just eat the bread. But the butter tastes fresh too. You can taste the difference. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go 10 for the bread service. Jeez. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's fresh, I mean, fresh in-house made bread, in-house made butter, black salt, the chives, like that combination comes together. So good, so good. All right, we've received the appetizers. I got the lobster bisque and Sam, you've got the um, uh, short rib? Pork belly. Pork belly, why did I say short rib? I don't know, I think you're just used to Disney short rib. <laughs> All right, so what's in this? So we got the, obviously the short rib and it has a cherry glaze on it and then there's an apple picama slaw, which I've never had before, but sounds interesting. And then a potato croquette with cheese, I believe. Yeah, it looks really I good. I didn't expect all that. I thought it was just gonna be like the pork belly. So, and then I think this is lotus root that they, you know, designed into like this little seashellish type. We got each of their signatures. So this is like their signature meat dish, and I got their sig signature basically fish dish or appetizers. That thing looks delicious. Slow cook this, I think, for four hours a day. Yes. <laughs> That's so good. Is it good enough to share? Uh, no. It's not good enough. <laughs> I wish there was like more of that. Wow. I really like the cherry glaze. Like it just gives it like this little bit of sweetness. And it's like just tender. It is a little fatty, but like you expect that with pork belly. Like, it's not like overly fatty. That's a nine. Well, I'm surprised you didn't give it a 10. Sounds amazing. There's more. Oh, okay. <laughs> the problem is the portion size. <laughs> Their signature lobster bisque. I am a fan of lobster bisque, but I want to say I'm only really a fan of good lobster bisque, not like like bad lobster bisque. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> so this also comes with a little bit of aged brandy and a chive oil. You can see the chive oil. You can see there's a crust on here too. And it's it like looks like soup. it's in like a flying saucer. Oh wow, the brandy gives it such a unique flavor. It's supposed to give it like a little kick. Yeah, that's exactly how it tastes. I'm, it's so interesting. I, I wish I could under, I was a bit more cultured so I could describe the flavor profile to you a bit better. This is delicious. Man. It looks very creamy. So like the flavor of the lobster and the flavor of the brandy, they mesh perfectly together. I almost want to pair them now, if I have a lobster, I would have a brandy with it. It's so good. 
Best lobster biscuit of all time. Oh. All time for me. Best yeah, we're, we're, we're all to a really, really yeah. good start. I can't wait for the entrees. Look at the nice chunk of lobster you get in there, too. The issue, I think, I think I agree with you, Sam, they're very small portions. You pay a lot of money for these tiny portion sizes, yeah. but they're quality made from scratch items. Uh, I give it a nine. And it's only because of the portion size. All right, dinner is served. I got the potato crusted red snapper, a signature disc. Potato wrapped. Potato wrapped red snapper. Signature dish, and Sam got their signature steak. Char crusted New York strip with a potato gratin. Looks very good. Gratin is stacked. Like, look at that. Yeah. All right. You ready to dig in? So we got it cooked medium rare. Let's see how the uh, cut looks. It's not a filet mignon, so it is a little bit harder to cut and it does have like that very crispy edge. So they have a dry rub on this. That looks perfectly cu cooked medium rare. And I feel like there's the filet mignons are very popular in Disney and they said this is their signature steak. So I'm happy you went with this. There's a bit more fat in a um, New York strip too. So sometimes it adds a bit to the flavor. It absorbs a bit more of those sauce. Yeah. sauce, the rub that they have it on. amazing the crust like really makes it the meat is still like pretty tender but like the crust is just like the whatever dry rub that they're using on it it tastes so good Want to try the potato this one more bite's sake it's so good <laughs> that's a nine. is that to nine it's another nine yeah Let's try this potato out. It looks like a little gooey on the inside, a little crispy on the outside. Nice and soft on the inside, a little crisp on the outside. This is one of the best meals that we've had in Disney. Like we've been enjoying everything so far and I was like I really hope that the entree is going to nail it because everything leading up to it has been so good and yes, this is... So the whole dish is a nine? All right, so this is the potato wrapped red snapper, their signature dish, their signature fish. Sam, dish what's fish. It? Uh, I think that it has leek fondue, and it's in a red wine reduction. So you can see this leek fondue right here. It looks very good. It's a little cheesy fondue. It's a white fish. Let's take a look at the interior. And this is the. Exterior. I cannot wait to eat this. I think that's very unique. So much moisture. So gooey. Look at the salt in the top. Just a little bit of salt. The potato gives it like a nice starchy contrast to the what light flakiness of the fish. And I think she said like the potato wraps, like the potato wrapping like helps hold the moisture of the fish mm -hmm. while it cooks. And then the leek fondue. Savory, cheesy, but also a lot of different textures in this. Because the fish is flaky, the potato is crispy, and this adds that unique kind of leek texture with the gooey cheese. And you know me, Sam. I love a good goo. Nine. Really good. Very good. Awesome signature dish. All right, we have retrieved the dessert menu. And as avid chocolate fans, we did go with the chocolate hazelnut bar and the Cocoa Beach, which is their take kind of like on a lava cake, but it's got mousse in it. They also have a lot of other good looking items like a Florida sunset and creamy goat cheese cheesecake. All right. So the reason we call it a cocoa breach is because the chocolate will break through the little medallion and actually go inside the uh, cake and there's a little bit of a cavity in there. And then on the side you also have a mascarpone whipped cream and an Oreo cookie crumble. It's like a work of art. I know, isn't that pretty? And it smells so good as you're pouring the chocolate. There it goes. So it just breached. And then I'll leave a little bit of chocolate on the side for you. There you go. Enjoy. Thank you very much.
All right, so this is their take on the lava cake. Uh, what's it called, Sam? This is the Cocoa Breach. It's dark chocolate mousse, salty caramel center, and a warm dark chocolate that they poured on top. So it's because they breaches the little, this little thing on top. And then, oh man, I want to show you this warm caramel center. Look at that. that Ooh, gooey. So What do I like, and What consistency do I like? Goo. A wet goo. That is a goo. That is a goo. It's goo all over the plate. And then there's a mascarpone cream on the side, which I love mascarpone cream. This, with Oreo crumbles below it, this is my favorite dessert I've ever had in my life. It's oh, this and the oh, cake. Whoa. What about my peanut butter pie? Or that there was another yeah, family yeah. peanut butter pie that you really liked. I think that Casey's mom Casey's makes. Casey's mom, grandmother, made a peanut butter pie. My, my stepmother made a peanut butter pie. Incredible. Incredible. Dark chocolate. Salty caramel. But not like the chewy caramel that sits in your teeth. Like a fresh, delicious caramel with a nice hint of salt. The dark chocolate warm on the outside, cool on the inside. The mixture of different temperatures, textures. It's very soft though and like gooey. Completely delicious. 10. 100% of 10. One of the best, one of my favorite desserts of all time. I can't wait for you to try it, Sam. Did it's anything get like lower than an 8? I feel like. I don't think I gave, I think I, I was pretty, I was, I was pretty filled with hyperbole today. Yeah. But like seriously, like this really is top three Disney meals right now. All right, Sam, time for your chocolate hazelnut bar, right? Yeah, so there is a milk chocolate whipped cream, uh, candied hazelnuts, uh, I think it's like a blood orange sauce, and then like an, an orange sorbet on the side, which I think is pretty interesting. Must be like a Florida flavors type of thing. Yeah. You got the citrus, you got a little this chocolate. Looks a lot like the one from Narcoozies, but that one, the one in Narcoozies is vegan, right? Yes. This is not vegan. Nice little sorbet with it. With a mixture of the flavors. A little citrus, a little chocolate, hazelnut. Holy cow. This is so good. And this is like another thing that's just, there's so much texture going on with this piece of chocolate, the cream, mousse, moist cake. Blood orange sauce, a cold sorbet, a little bit of crunchy, like you literally have every texture you can think of. This is so good. It's so rich. And like there's dark chocolate, but then there's also milk chocolate. And then you kind of just have this like little refreshing bit of sorbet and it kind of like, even though this is sweet, it cuts into the richness of the chocolate and just like balances it out. It's so unique, putting that on the side of something like this. It's nine. Wow. Wow. <laughs> All right, it's time for us to head out, but I do you want to go over just a few things before we leave. They do have a bar over here, and what I really like about it is it's like wine glasses are kind of like almost a, a chandelier-esque for the ceiling. It's very nice, and I guess you could sit and eat a la carte over here. They also have an open kitchen, so you could see Everything they're cooking, as they cook it, you can see they're making everything fresh to order. All right, flying fish. It's a good time. One of the best meals in Disney, for sure. Ooh, it's, the sun is still out. It's definitely summer. Man, that thing is blaring. All right, so that does it for our celebration at Flying Fish. And I do have to say to everyone that had suggested <laughs> Flying Fish, thank you so much. Because <laughs> we may have waited a bit longer if, there weren't for the, it, was, if it wasn't for those suggestions. It was delicious, like literally top three meals I've ever had in Disney, right? Yeah, and I was actually wrong about my steak. It's actually a 10. Yeah. Like, I, I don't steak think anything could have been better. I really enjoyed the crust. There's actually a little bit of brown sugar in the crust, and it just was just perfect. Yeah. Uh, my Everything. fish was fresh, delicious, zero fishy taste. Had that perfect crispy outer potato tasting shell. Uh, then the desserts. I mean, how many tens did I give out today? Yeah, <laughs> this was crazy. Yeah. Uh, I would say top three 
dining experience you've ever had at Disney. And the bread too actually comes from a local bakery in Winter Garden, yes. Florida. That was so popular that they actually like they would always sell out of it, so they actually stopped selling it to the public and only sell the bread for Disney now, which is pretty cool. So you can only get that bread. Pretty wild here. Anyway. Yeah, it was good. Fresh, delicious. The taste of the chives in the bread, uh, the uh, appetizers, the pork belly melting your mouth. Yes. The uh, lobster bisque, uh, delicious. Again, zero fishy taste on anything that I had. Uh, the app, the my entrees already spoke about. The desserts, some of the top desserts, the top dessert. His dessert was like mine yeah. was very good, but his yeah. was just like over the top. One of the top I've ever had in Disney. Right now, my top three restaurants, based off of my most recent experiences, would be California Grill, Narcuzzi's, and Flying Fish. In that order. For me, I would actually put this above Narcuzzi's. I would wow. put California Grill, Flying Fish, Narcuzzi's. Yeah. So. There, you have it. Um, again, thank you so much. Thank you to everyone who has followed along in our journey the past three years since we had started this vlog. Um, it's certainly been a journey for us. A lot of things in our personal lives that have changed. Uh, change of location. Moved from New York to Florida, which we have detailed vlogs on. We've met so many awesome people, so many awesome content creators, um, have made plenty of friends through the comments and subscriptions that we've made here. Uh, and, I mean, you guys, you know, provide us the opportunity to make these videos for you and we appreciate that because it's a form of artistic expression for us that we get a lot out of. Yes, um, and we do have full-time jobs. Sometimes people think that like we're just doing this or yeah. some people think Disney pays us, which I always laugh when I say because it's definitely the other way around. We definitely <laughs> we spend yeah. a lot of money on these meals and not that we don't get an amazing meal out of it and experience and mm -hmm. love doing this regardless, but we put a lot into it. I agree. You know, yeah. each week like Two videos for three years. We have never missed a Monday it. and Thursday. I hate when you bring it up because I always feel like you're jinxing <laughs> yeah. it when for you say For three years, that. so we started that um, started that schedule when we first started. Monday, Thursday, 12 p.m. and we have always stuck to it. I try my best to be a man of my word when I can be. And I'm a man of my word. And you're a woman of your word. All right, so there you have it. Thank you for three years. And if you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe. Liking will really help our channel grow. It pushes this video out to the stratosphere of the YouTube algorithm. Helps other people find the video subscribing. It also helps our channel grow. Hit the bell notification so that way you're notified every time when videos come out. Which is Wednesday. Every Monday and Thursday at 12 p.m. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Don't count the days. Make the days count. We will see you next time. That's all, folks. Hey, if you guys have any other suggestions, we're definitely open to it, especially after that one. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please give us more. Yeah, it could be outside Disney, it could be inside Disney. Uh, off camera, we've gone to, um, someone suggested to us uh, Musso and Frank. Oh, yeah. In, uh, it was in uh, Hollywood or, or Los Angeles, California, right near the Walk of Fame. That was one of my favorite meals of all time, too. We didn't vlog that. I kind of want to go back there to vlog. It'd be a rough place to vlog. Very dark, very, yeah. very dark. Uh, such a beautiful area, the boardwalk. I think this is the perfect place for us to celebrate, Sam. Maybe we should walk to Epcot.